How good does it feel to be back in the win column? Uh, it feels actually, man. You know, uh, four out of my last, I mean, three out of my last four fights, you know, I did come out victorious and finally get back in the winning column is basically uh, the feeling I'm used to. And I'm, I'm glad to have the feeling back, you know. It was your uh, second fight after a, a much needed layoff to mm -hmm. rejuvenate your mind, your spirit, your body. Uh, how do you feel going into 2024 now? Is this now that you're back in the win column, do you want to keep uh, sharpening your tools to get ready for, you know, the, the top of the weight division? Or is this something where, like your, your corner just said, uh, straight to the top? Oh, yeah, straight to the top for sure, man. I'm 33. You know, I've been there before. I know what it takes. And um, I just opened a gym recently back at home. So I'm in the gym 24-7, man. And uh, I think that's what the problem was with me traveling and having to train out in Houston and other places. I couldn't have access to the gym and uh, my coaches. And now that I'm back with my man, Andre Robin, full, full pledge at home, I think uh, that's all I needed. Is this fight was at, at, what, like 63, something like that? 65. Yeah, yeah, 65, 65. yeah. Is that uh, your new home or are you going to try and cut back down to 54? Oh, no, nah, we're done with 54, man. I, I was already huge for the weight class anyway, so, you know, I, I feel as though that every fighter eventually at one point in their career they move up and my time is now to move up and try to take over the 160 pound division so 154 i think that's over for me now jared you got the, the what was that the fifth round or sixth round uh what round was that fifth, fifth yeah he didn't come out for the fifth yeah, yeah you um Fifth round TKO victory. Uh, you got you got the rounds in. Was that the main objective? Like, because it, it seemed like you had him hurt a couple of times, but you kind of right. like eased up. Well, it wasn't really the point to get the rounds. In. I just didn't want to rush and get too careless out there. You know, uh, my whole thing is to break my opponents down without taking any less damage than I haven't been taking in the past. So, mm. you know, uh, if I see a kill, I go for it. But if it's not there, I'll take my time and uh, let it come to me. Why is 160 pound? Jared Hurd, a dangerous Jared Hurd? Because, man, like I said, I'm back. I'm back in the gym every day. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm back, man. I'm back. You know, I'm back in the gym 24-7. And uh, I think that was what the issue was. You know, my past fight, you saw my conditioning was the big factor. Every time I come on in and fight, I was in shape. Um, I think in my past few fights, you saw me get a little fatigued at times. And I think that was my biggest problem. And that no longer will be an issue. So, be good. Now you were really working the stab to the body. Was was that the game plan? Like heading into the fight, like I'm just gonna um, just slow him down and yeah. just break his will. Yeah, we wanted to just work behind the jab, and uh, you know I have a sharp, strong jab. Um, I, I I just need to use it more. Like I, I used to walk in all the time. We wanted to get it working behind the jab before we uh, started walking on our opponents. And I mean the jab was working for me. You saw me killing them upstairs and downstairs yeah. with it. Uh, I was breaking them down with just a jab, so. I didn't really have to open up with the right hand. When I finally threw it to the body, that's the one that set him down. Did you realize that that was all happening when he kept spitting out his mouthpiece, or <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I was kind of head hunting a little uh, until my corner told me, you know, start going to the body a little more, Jerry. You, you only head hunting, you aim for the head. So I, uh, I started going to the body, and um, I saw him backing up and retreating a little more. And then uh, I said, man, let me, let me really put some shots in there. And that's when I threw the right hand. Now, you know I got to ask you, at 160, right, mm -hmm. you're still one of the biggest names. Is there a fight that you're looking at? Like, uh, I've always wanted this guy, but I never got him. All them motherfuckers. All of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All of them. Like I said, man, it's, it's time. It's just my time. You know, uh, uh, I, I could say any name, but, you know, you know who got the titles. Jamal Charlo, um, Carlos Adamas, I be said, and Jenna Beck. He over there on top race. I don't know how easy that would be made, so let me get the other two. I'm here. I'm ready right now. I always wanted to see that more from you. I'm here right now, man. You know, uh, Big Charlo just came back. He had a good performance off a two-year layoff. And uh, if you want if you want another another fight before he go for any of the top guys, I'm here, man. Mm. Tell him what's up. It was Lindy me. Laura and Danny Garcia supposed to be fighting for the WBA. Oh, yeah, is, yeah, Is yeah. that a fight that you would like to get the winner? Hey, look, y'all love Swift to see that hurt Swift. Laura, too. Yeah, Swift yeah. On Swift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swift on Swift. You know what I'm saying? Don't matter. You know, uh. I already beat Eric's Lanny Lava. We can do a rematch, uh, her versus Lara too. And if Danny Garcia is successful, like I said, any of the champions, I'm ready. What do you